Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony Egby. Uh, welcome to my talk. I am an Android engineer at uh, Mapbox, and I've been working in location technology on mobile devices for the last, I'd say, six or seven years. So hopefully, I know what I'm talking about. Um, let's get started. So location on Android. Um, it's very daunting for a first time developer. It's really hard to know where to go, what to do, how to get the best location information on an Android device. There are really three main questions you got to ask yourself. Which location providers am I using? Which, uh, how to get background location? And that's especially important after the Oreo update. And then uh, how to clean up location data. So in an urban setting, location data is very, very poor. How do you clean up that data? So first, let's talk about location providers. The native Android APIs, there are three main providers. There is passive, GPS, and network. Uh, a passive provider um, does basically what it says. It's passive. It sits there, and any location point that, um, that the device or another application gets while it's active, it'll pass along to you. It listens for that. There is also a GPS provider, which actively turns on all the GPS antennas, tries to triangulate your location off of satellites. And then the network provider, which uses a combination of cell and Wi-Fi data to determine your location. Google also has its own provider called the Fuse Location Provider. What this does is it's a combination of the GPS and the network provider. In a, in a, and an extra special sauce that Google has to try and determine your location and manage those systems together. So what should you do? Well, Google has a solution for you. They want you to just Google it. Just use the Fuse Location Provider. That's what they want. And there are a lot of benefits to the Fuse Location Provider. Um, it actually gets you, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, it actually is what they push the most. So it utilizes it. So on all their documentation, they push this for developers. It also has all the bells and whistles that Google wants you to have. So that's where they put all their stuff into. But is that really what you should do? So basically, you're at the mute mercy of Google's algorithm when you use the Fuse Location Provider. What is this location point they're giving you? Is it a real point? Is it a software generated point? Are they preferring Wi-Fi? Are they preferring GPS data? That's important to you depending on what your use case is. So if you're doing a running app, you may not want to rely on Wi-Fi data more than GPS data. These are all factors you need to think about when you're using the Fuse Location Provider. Also, it requires Google Play services. So this has um, a couple consequences. You have, obviously, a slightly larger install size. You also have a, excuse me, you also have to rely on the Google client setup system, which I think is inelegant and I don't like a lot. And you, it is not available in every country. So China, Iran, Cuba, and a few other countries do not allow Google Play services. Therefore, you can't use the Fuse location provider in those locations. That's going to help. You'll have to think about that when determining what you're going to do. Either you're not accessing those markets, so you're leaving 1.2 billion people off the table, or you are um, having to do two times as much work to use Android APIs as well as Google APIs. The one thing I do see that this Fuse location provider does really well is the last location. So it allows you to get a very quick last location update, very few lines of code, it's a great way to get that. So if that's all your needs are, then Fuse Location Provider probably will work for you. Now, on to the Android built-in APIs. In this case, all the control and responsibility is in your hands. You have to pick the provider, you have to turn them on, off, and you have to determine if you're switching between providers and what circumstances you're switching between those multiple providers. You have to, do the save, you have to save your own last location, so um, this is something you should probably do very securely and make very easy for yourself to grab so you can actually give your, your users a location update when they need it. And the main part of using Android built-in APIs is you are responsible for optimizing the system. 
And what that really comes down to involving location technologies is managing battery versus accuracy. So, battery versus accuracy. You have to balance the system. So, what that means is which providers are you using? Are you only using one? Are you using all three of the Android providers, just two? When are you using them? And how do you switch between them? Um, how often do you turn it on or off? So one feature that I have noticed and worked on is basically the warm-up and burst of GPS data. What this basically means is you turn the GPS on for a long period of time until it's actually warm. Um, this is usually about 30 seconds. And I know that sounds long, but this is specifically for longer periods of time of location tracking. So a uh, fitness route, a navigation route. This will help you get really highly accurate data because anything less than 20 seconds is actually pretty bad data from the GPS antenna. Uh, so you want anything 20 to 30 seconds, then you start getting really good data. And the burst option is just like this, you're going to turn the GPS on and off. And how this will work is you turn it on for 30 seconds, turn it off for 10 seconds, then turn it back on for five to 10 seconds, turn it back off. For longer routes, this actually gets you a better battery burn rate. You were using, using the GPS half the time, but since it's already pre-warmed, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't take very long to get a new location, a new highly accurate location point from the GPS anymore when you turn it back on. This really, I've seen this save cut battery burn rate in half when using this method. Another trick you should do is combine GPS data with Wi-Fi data. And what I, when you should use Wi-Fi data is either right when you're starting up an app, when you're waiting for the GPS to warm up in between those bursts, you want to use the highly high quality, excuse me, you to use Wi-Fi data to fill in those gaps. And another really good use case for Wi-Fi data is using it during uh, car navigation because to collect Wi-Fi data, someone literally drives around and determines Wi-Fi points and connects those with GPS points in a car. Those points are lined up very close to a road. You can use that kind of, you can use that to your advantage. Also, you need to think about specific triggers. And what I mean by this is, when are you gonna turn on the, the location services? Is it as soon as this app opens? Are you gonna turn on briefly to get a location, then turn it off until they need to start a navigation route? What is the use, you're, what is the reason you're using location in your app and only use it for those purposes or you're going to cause battery issues. Now let's switch gears really quick, talk about, talk about background location on Oreo devices. If you haven't heard, background services are dead. You can no longer have a service running in the background, intermittently collecting location data, sending it back, using it to determine check-in, check-out and entrance data, things like that. So how do you get around with that now? You have basically three solutions. One, foreground services. Now, the benefit of this works just like a background service, so there's almost nothing you need to change. The issue is, when you activate this, the user's gonna get a notification saying, hey, this app's burning the battery power. You don't want that. Someone's gonna uninstall your app, someone's not gonna use it. How do you get around that is you actually provide value within that notification. So you are providing them weather updates. You are providing them with navigation controls. You are providing them even music. You are providing them with fitness controls. All of these will be beneficial, and if that use case fits you, then you can use a foreground service. There's also geofences, and that's, if you don't know what a geofence is, that is a, a digital fence around a geographic area that you can detect entrance, exit, and, tr and uh, dwelling in. And then you also have jobs that you can schedule in the background with Oreo. So let's dig into geofences really quick. Geofences require play services. So the same limitations you experience with Fuse Location Provider are you gonna experience with the native geofences that Google provides for you. So take that into consideration before you use them. How they work is they detect transitions. So they detect if you're entering a geofence, if you're exiting a geofence, and if you're dwelling in there. And dwelling is a parameter you can set, say, I want to know if this person has been here for 15 minutes. Well, you can detect that. that the, the, once the user enters a geofence, it'll wait 15 minutes, see if they're still there, and then send you a notification that, like that, to that effect. The only thing I found, 
I found a couple things wrong with this, though. Geofences tend to be unreliable. They don't always trigger when you expect them to trigger, um, and many times they are very delayed in their triggering. So this leads to a whole other problem where you can actually miss transitions. So a good example for this is say, hey, you want to remind someone to go get gasoline? <laughs> go get gasoline um, when they go by this exit. Well, if your system is slow, they can actually travel for, through that entire geofence without actually triggering that notification. No exit, no entrance, no dwell information. You can be put at a disadvantage, and they might run out of gas, as an example. Job scheduler is actually my preferred way to get background location data. So what it utilizes is specific triggers. So you can set it based on time, uh, based on battery level, based on network type, um, based on storage level, based if the device is plugged in, and you can trigger jobs to happen that meet those particular parameters. One of the best benefits of using locations in job scheduler is you will actually be able to piggyback off foreground location collection. And what I mean by this is, say someone is running a fitness app in the foreground. If you have a location-specific job, the Android operating system will go, hey, this is a location-based job. I should run this when they're running location in the foreground, and we'll start running your jobs at the same time. So this will benefit you in collecting location data from other systems that are already using it, so you're not even using battery at that point. You're just collecting it as other systems are using it. So this is beneficial for fitness apps, um, navigation apps, and even uh, Instagram turns on location every time you enter the app. That can start triggering location jobs to run if you need specific data. Now here's an example, a very small example of a scheduled job and how it runs. So this job is scheduled to run every five to 10 minutes, the periodic, and then you also, I also have it set to run only when there's a network connection. Pretty simple, no big deal. In the background, when this job runs, there's a lot of special sauce going on where I'm actually collecting location data. So I have location running for a set amount of time, I have it bursting, and I'm collecting it, and this is the result. So as you can see on the west side of the map, that's me biking to work. That's my commute. So you can see the route of where I'm, I'm commuting. It, the GPS is bursting at that time, piggybacking off a fitness application. Uh, in the south, you can see I'm just walking around my neighborhood, going to places, doing things in my neighborhood. And then up on the east side of the map, you can see venue detection, restaurants, houses I've been to, things like that. These are all three different forms of data that can be tailored to three different occasions or states you need. So if you need to do a, a check-in app, venue detection's better. If you need to do something related to fitness and tracking how often someone's working out, if they're me reaching their goals, that could be better. Finally, I want to touch on the urban canyon effect. Um, this, if you're not familiar with this, it happens when you have tall buildings. So basically what's happening is the satellites are being blocked. The data is coming down and it's bouncing around, being blocked, not reaching where it needs to. So this will cause your Uber driver to be on the other block. This will cause you to be lost. You can see the little uh, marker on, on the Maps app moving around, drifting, trying to figure out where you're at. So this is basically the result, you and your Uber driver trying to figure out where are you. So, I found three ways that really help in mitigating this, and let's look at them really quick. First, filter out inaccurate data. So, any, so when you get a location point back, um, one of the parameters you receive is a horizontal accuracy. If that is over 100, whoop, if that is over 100, um, throw it out. That location point is basically worthless. It's probably coming from a cell tower or bouncing off a building two blocks away. You don't want that point. Um, anything over 50 is not great, and um, basically you're looking something around 30 or below, that's a good solid location point that's very usable, and I recommend using that. Um, another property is uh, using geodetic to Cartesian conversion. Big words, but basically what that is, is taking um, a globe view, lat long coordinates, and putting them down into an XYZ map coordinate system. And what this allows you to do is manipulate location data. So you can move points left, right, adjust them so things are on the same X plane, Y plane, Z plane. This all has a lot of benefits, but it's also a very, very advanced technique that 
I couldn't go into in this beginner talk, but, we can but if you have any questions afterwards, I'll be happy to talk about it. Um, but it's a very advanced technique that can be used to change data, manipulate data, and calculate differences between location data. The simplest and actually one of the best ways to clean up location data is actually simply averaging the data. So what I mean by that is, as it sounds, you take, you get, take a sample size of location data in a location. So um, you grab five, 10 points, then you add up all the latitudes, divide, add, add up all the longitudes, divide, and now you have an actually really clean, really useful location point that is much more accurate than uh, the raw data you're getting. Now, uh, I want to show you an example of this in action, actually. Um, as you can see, uh, DC has smaller buildings than most other places, but bear with me. You're starting to collect location data, uh, and as you can see, it's starting to slowly drift, bounce around, and uh, then go straight down this street. What I do is then I take all that data, average it, and get a solid location point from that, inf from that location data. So instead of being on the other side of the street, instead of being all the way down the road, I'm actually standing on that corner, and this is where I was when I was collecting this data. It's very easy technique, very simple, but something to keep in mind to really up your game on your accuracy of the data you're, at, you're collecting. All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I am glad to come, and uh, if anyone has any questions afterwards, I'll be happy to meet up and talk. As you already know, there are two microphones on the side of the stage. We have time for a pair of questions. So if you have it, ask them, please. There are just too many people down there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, great talk. Thank you very much. Uh, we are currently using your Mapbox SDK in our project, and uh, I was wondering uh, what kind of uh, location providers do you provide in your SDK? W what are they based on? Yeah. Um, so we have what we call location engines in the Mapbox X SDK, which are basically enhancing the native uh, APIs. Um, we don't do anything fancy, like I've spoke with here. Uh, but what we do provide is we use Google's. Uh, fuse location provider, and then also a mixture of the Android APIs to provide that you uh, solid location data. Uh, one last question. Then, if you have other questions, I think Anthony will be pleased to answer it. Yeah, absolutely. Probably. I'm happy to <laughs> meet up. You will have a problem with that. Hmm. Okay. Last question. So, uh, for missing GPS locations, uh, yes. do your SDK uh, interpolate? Uh, um, our SDK currently doesn't. It's something I'm looking into separately since I joined the company. Uh, but what, yes, you can do interpolation. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. It's, again, another advanced feature I did not talk about. Uh, but if anyone's familiar, interpolation is basically uh, assuming the, the point based on past data or future expectations of data of where someone's at or where they're going to be. Um, use this a lot for correcting addresses, things like that before, so yeah. <laughs>